Thursday morning here on the Cross Border Interview Podcast. My name is Christopher Brown, as always, and we are back for another great episode of the show. And today's episode, we are sitting down with a Calgary-based music group, and they are called Brothers Bicker Band. I've had to say that about 15 times because I feel like it's a tongue twister, and every time I say it, I keep on screwing it up. So I had to literally look at the screen one more time before I said it because I knew I was going to screw it up, but I did Brothers Bigger Man, thank you all for joining us. This is my very first five-way conversation, so this is going to be an interesting experiment. Thank you for doing this this fine morning. Well, thanks for having us, and I hate to tell you this, Chris, but you, you did kind of screw it up. It's the Brother Bigger Band. <laughs> well, this is getting off to a great start, and we're only two minutes into the interview. <laughs> That's the great thing about live shows. Sometimes they go completely wonky. I can imagine you guys uh, have that experience as well. So I'm going to do this as a round round table. I'm going to start with uh, you, Jeremy. I'm going to ask the age old question. What does music, and I'm going to ask this to everyone. What does music mean to you? Oh, man. That's a good question. Um, That's why I asked it. the, uh, you know, I, well, as far as music, listening to it, I'll, I think I'll, I'll speak to kind of why I like to do the Brother Bicker Band and what, and what it means to me is uh, that ability to create and that ability to, um, you know, when you're sitting in a room together, the five of you on rehearsal night, and you have those magic moments where everything clicks and the hair on your arm stands up, and you're just in a, in a moment that is replicated in very few other places that, you know, it, it, anything else I do, I don't get it at work. I mean, you get it at, at home, but um, it's a special place and it's a, it's a special feeling and it just keeps me coming back when we're able to connect on that level. And, and uh, it's a, it's spiritual in a way. And that's, that's why I like it. What about yourself, Tom? How, what does music mean to you? Uh, it, I think that's an answer that I think has changed over time. Like right now, music means community to me. And uh, we, we have our, our weekly church session where we come together and, <laughs> and have our spiritual practice like Jeremy said. Amen, about. brother. But also, you know, we're, we're back to playing gigs. And, um, and Daryl does sound for live music. And, uh, and uh, we were a bunch of us, <clears throat> actually last week, we were out to see a, a really beautiful concert in a lovely concert hall, back being with people in an audience. and. So whether it's a musician playing on a stage or being with our band or, or, uh, or seeing live music, it's sort of people coming back together and finding a way to be together around music. And that gives it a ton of meaning for me. Daryl, same question to yourself. And then we'll switch it up after Ben answers. But Daryl, what does music mean to you? Yeah, I mean, I think music has a lot of voices uh, without trying to be, have a pun. But it, it's... Uh, you know, it can it can mean the gathering of people together, but it can also mean, you know, I love listening to music on my own as well, and it does something spiritual to me then. So, you know, so I think the spirituality in music is definitely something important, and that's whether it's like people coming together and enjoying music together and a thing which is very, very powerful, but what's also very powerful for me and a lot of other people is, you know, listening to music on your own in your own space quiet like just being able to just focus and immerse yourself in it it's just it's so powerful and then being able to share that with other people and having that experience all together from there is also that's what i love about it ben what about yourself what what does music mean to you and you're on mute ben i figured that out i figured that out Thanks. Uh, <laughs> you think I do this for a living or something like that? <laughs> uh, music for me is an opportunity to to escape, right? It's uh, uh, whether I'm listening to music or playing music, it, it, it takes me somewhere else. Uh, lets me sort of escape the like the the day to day, you know, strife, and you know, go to a different place, whether it's a happy place or a sad place or a pensive place or a party place, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's transformative. I, I wanna ask, and this is an open question to whoever wants to take this first, um, who are 
the Brother Bicker Band. Tom, you want to answer that one? Oh, no. <laughs> I just saw Tom give the eyes to Jeremy to answer the question. <laughs> but who, who is the band? Oh, wow, you're, you're, you're hitting the hard hitting questions, man. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So, how do you like music? If you like the guitar, <laughs> who, who is the brother bigger band? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I think for me, the, the brother Bicker band are sort of a, a kind of a collection of unique pieces. And uh, we have a bunch of just lines that we drew from all over the world to kind of get to here. And uh, it's that cool intersection of sort of musical experience and musical ideas. And, uh, but I think we all sort of have ourselves kind of firmly rooted in a, in a music tradition. And uh, that kind of, kind of folk rock, alt rock, indie rock kind of Roots kind rock. of thing, roots rock thing, and so we we sort of have a common vocabulary, but uh, we just bring all these different sort of perspectives and experience to that, and uh, and I think that really comes out when I, I, there's a few songs that we've done some real sort of group creation on, and when I when I listen to those tunes, I really think I hear those pieces and parts of all those contributions that kind of end up being this kind of one picture, but uh, but they each have their components that are kind of unique to them, yeah. Well, well what, I find, what I find interesting on your website, which will be linked in the show notes for anyone who wants to go and check this out, you, in literally in the bio, it says, close your eyes, picture where you were the first time you heard that really, really great song. And that is the sort of the essence of who you are as a band, it seems like, because when you listen to some of your music and you listen to the albums that I've been able to listen to in the uh, time that from the schedule of the interview to now, you get the sense that you can you can come along with the song. It's a great storytelling of a song. Was that always the case? Was it always a, it seemed like a natural flow of music for you, the band? And I'll, I'll, I'll ask this question to Ben here. Was it easy to bring five different people or four different people together to create a music that kind of resonates within not just this decade, but past decades as well? Um, I, I wouldn't say it's been, it's been hard. I mean, I, I think every group, every group environment comes with its share of, you know, challenge. Um, but it also comes with its share of opportunity. Like we, we pride ourselves on being, uh, friends, you know, as well as, you know, uh, musicians. And so we, we, we get along quite well. I think, uh, Jeremy and Tom, uh, share the lines duty for, for songwriting and they, you know, put pen pen to paper the most, and they bring the the big ideas to the table. But it, but everyone else has um, a really good opportunity to contribute in terms of uh, adding feedback, making suggestions, and everyone's open in terms of um, pulling the song in different directions. Like you know, saying whoa 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 whoa, what do you you know? Why are we doing this? Why are we saying this? Let's you know, what are we trying to to make it you know make it feel? So we're uh, from my perspective, we're we're always trying to be conscious of um, what we're what the mood we're trying to convey, right? Whether we're, whether we're playing a live show or we're doing a, or a live record or we're doing a recording, um, the words say something, and the music we're playing should try to reflect that. So we're trying to cap, you know, capture something there. Mm -hmm. Is it hard? Because. You, you all seem like very great people. You seem like you're very uh, different people at the same time, like uh, uh, Tom was saying there for a second, that you, you all bring your unique perspectives to music. Was it hard to sit down or form a group out of such a unique, diverse group of people that are sitting around the table here? Uh, I, I would go to Daryl, but it doesn't seem like he is still here. Oh, yeah, I'm still here, man. <laughs> okay, no problem. So witness protection now, man. Yeah, yeah. After man. you yeah. weren't joking. So, Daryl, for can you no, blur his face on a live? A little dark live dark. No, um, no, it was funny. We, uh, I've only been playing the band for a few months, but it's uh, we have a lot in common musically. Um, you know, it's one of the first bands I've been in where I can say, "Hey, you guys know like Peace Frog by the Doors," and you know, then we played it. From top to bottom, <laughs> I've never yeah. been able to do that with anyone else. Uh, so yeah, it's been it's been amazing. It's been like 
it's a cliche, cheesy thing to say, but literally it's been a really common language between like a guy who grew up in Africa versus North America, very opposite ends of the earth. And we just have a total com- commonality and through music, you know, and through that, you know, we get on because that says a lot about people. Yeah. Well said, man. Yeah. Good. So to Jeremy, where did the idea of the band start from? Because it didn't just come out of the woodworks one day and here you guys all are. It started somewhere. So where did the band start from? Oh, the origin story. The origin actually... story. If this was a Marvel movie, we'd be spending billions of dollars on it. So <laughs> what is the origin story of the Brothers Baker? Flashback um... sequence. <laughs> <laughs> we um so it kind of bore out of i was in uh i was in another band um about uh, this is like six or seven years ago um tom and i have known each other for i don't know probably 20 years we, we from the neighborhood and from we played ball hockey together neither of us really knew the other guy was into music and um so i was in another band called the Bicker Brothers, and uh, they they were, we got that name because we fought so much over the name, and then we broke up. And uh, just so we're clear, Christopher, we've tried to change the names innumerable times. Yeah, I saw it happen. Jeremy's <laughs> not, he, he really <laughs> likes that combination of words. We'll be band brother Bicker pretty yeah. soon. And yeah, that's all. Shark sandwich. Shark sandwich. By I'm the going way. Shark sandwich. Shark <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> I was going to say, by the looks that Ben and Tom just gave when uh, Jeremy just said that name, I'm assuming this story has not come out in the band rehearsals at all of what the original name of the band was. I, I guarantee they know the, they know this yeah. story. How could you even hear him hesitating to even tell you the name of the old band? Like, ah, I, will I say it? Yeah. <laughs> so, so it, like, the whole, I guess the genesis came out of when I, when that, uh, band kind of broke up I still I was kind of doing my own thing and I'd always had a bucket list the thing of I wanted to do an EP and I wanted I had a few songs in the in the kitty and um so I would do kind of you know open mics around town and I was I just said I was lazy I'm the I'm brother bicker and I'm gonna do an EP and it's gonna be by brother bicker and then I invited Tom and him he came into the studio with me and our first EP came out, I guess, 26 years ago or so. And he put, like, him and I worked really closely on kind of what my vision was. And then it kind of bore out of that, out of that first EP. Um, and our, in the, our previous drummer, Carl, who was with the, the other band, he came, kind of came with me with the other band. And the three of us, we had, we've gone through, Jim's our latest bassist, but we, we had another bassist, stuff. And then, and then Ben came on and, and, you know, when you kind of talk about, you know, our, our sound and when we brought Ben on like the Hammond, the organ, pianos, the keys are, are such an integral part of what we do. And I think give us, give us our, our signature, like mm-hmm. in, in many ways. Yeah. And it give us that throwback sound that we kind of uh, all connect to and, and, and look toward. And so he came on board and then, you know, and then it just all kind of, kind of clicked and moved, moved forward from there. And we started writing and, and, and pretty soon, you know, we have 25 plus original songs and that we have in our kitty and, and it just, it continues to grow from there. So. I, 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 like I said, I've had the pleasure to listen to some of the songs and one song in particular stuck out to me. And I, hopefully someone here can tell me the origin story about this, this song, because it spoke to me in a way that I, I've never had a song speak to me in some ways. And that is heart and heart. I, I've listened to oh. it over and over again, and I want to know where this story came from because you, you hear it, you listen to it, and you get the vibe that it you, there was some there was some emotions that you were put into it, and I could be just up creek without a paddle on that one, but it truly spoke to me. Who wrote the song, and where did the song come from? Yeah, that that's that's a song that I I sort of I sort of brought the shell of that to the band, and uh, it came out of you know, I mean, like a lot of great, you know, songs that are other bands have written. And, uh, you know, this is, I don't know if this is a great song or a good song. It's one I certainly like, but uh, it's born out of some heartbreak. And uh, so, and really that, you know, 
it's it's much more uh, much less rock and roll than the young heartbreak. It's more like that that middle aged dad loving <laughs> kids and family and looking at the struggles uh, that they go through. And the concept of having a harder heart was uh, just being able to deal with some of the love and loss that comes with family and and some of the struggles that we see our our loved ones go through. And uh, just trying to think about that that concept of you know, wanting a harder heart to be able to get through things, but knowing that, you know, the softness of your heart is what makes you, you know, present and available and, and, uh, and, and part of your family. So it was trying to hold those two things kind of at the same time. And it kind of came as a, a little bit, maybe more of a country tune. And, and uh, when it came to the band, we just found this nice flow with it and uh, really worked on sort of how that instrumentation reflected some of the sweetness uh, that we wanted in that. And, uh, and just have a sense that, uh, you know, all the sort of dynamics and pieces that came to it uh, really built the song into something that I, I never thought it would be. And uh, when I first sort of thought about it, but uh, became really cool, some of the parts of the people that contributed to it. Well, I want, I want to talk about that for a second, because writing is always the integral part of any music, music group or a musician. And when you have five people like your band does, what is the process that you go through? And I'll, I'll throw it up to Ben on this one to see uh, to start with, and then we'll throw it over to Daryl because I just want to get what is your process of bringing a song to the band, or is it some other process that is, people might not assume? So, what is the process for music writing in the band? Well, I'll uh, I'll, I'll give you two different perspectives on it. I'll give you uh, both mine. Uh, <laughs> I, I brought one original idea to the band. And it was sort of just a, a lick that I was noodling around on between in between songs. And uh, I think Tom picked up on it and said, hey, you know, what's that you're playing? And I'm like, I don't know, it's just, it's just something. And uh, the next week he came, you know, he kind of chewed on it for the week. And then, you know, came back the next week and we had, you know, the basis of a song. And uh, truthfully, the, the, the hard thing for me was, um, letting go of any preconceptions I had of where that was going to go and just kind of let the band do its thing. And now we, it, it's its own song that we, you know, that, that, that we wrote as a band and um, we all quite like to play it. Uh, other songs, you know, Tom and Jeremy bring them, bring them to the band as, as sort of par partially formed or fully formed ideas with, you know, some, some, some basic structure and some melody. Sometimes there's some, some licks that go along with it. Uh, sometimes there's some lyrics that go along with it or some basic chord structures. And then we, um, we punch it around, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll jam on it, we'll noodle on it. And, um, you know, Tom and Jeremy will provide some guidance as to their, you know, their vision, where they see the song going. And, you know, it's a pretty open, open conversation amongst all of us to, to, you know, to contribute ideas and say, well, you know, what do you think about doing a fill like this or, you know, what about, you know, jumping up to this key or, you know, changing the mood to something like that, or, you know, it, it, it really becomes a group process at that stage, but it, it uh, there's a bit of a private process beforehand. And then, it, you know, they just hand it over to the group and well, I don't know, we've got one song right now where, uh, you know, two roads diverged in a wood and we have two very different versions of the same song that can make two very different emotions. And, uh, you know, these two guys right here, you know, sit on uh, opposite sides of the equation on it. And, and they're both fantastic songs. They both sound great. One will be a B side and one will be the A side. And I let these guys, you know, duke it out over which one's which. Oh, that's funny. Now, Daryl, it seems like... I'll just, I won't duke, I'll just pout. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I got to ask the question. It seems like it's a very collaborative approach to writing music, whether it be uh, someone coming in with a tune or someone coming in with uh, lyrics. It seems like a very collaborative uh, process. Uh, ben said it best there. Sometimes it's hard to give over control and say, here's something that I've started. Take it and do what, what you want because you, you think of it as your child. 
has it become easier over time to do that because you guys have formed that connection of sort of a brotherly bond to ensure that you won't destroy the sort of the child that I've started and I hope you guys will take it and foster it as much as I have. Daryl? Yeah, well, my process really is to find a group of guys that can write great songs and then play drums on them. So that's really, like, that's really the extent You're of my fine. process. Uh, so, yeah, and then, you know, once we get there, the songs are already there. I, I fully understand the whole song being your baby thing. And so, you know, you got to you gotta approach things gently. But, yeah, no, I'm serious. I just, like, I like to play uh, in bands that, where the song is the most important thing, you know. Um, and that's what these guys do, and that's why I love playing it. But yeah, that's really all the process is for me. Oh, okay. What about yourself, Jeremy? On that same question, is it hard? Because as a lyricist, it might be you might have a tune in your head when you're coming up with a song, as from a lyrics perspective, to have someone take that song and then start writing another lyric that you might not think of, and then, like Ben said, you have those two complete opposite songs that convey two different emotions. Yeah, I, you know, I I think that it's gotten easy. Like, I'm a human being, and there's you know, crap, Tom. Why'd you write such a good song? I wish I had done that. And all, and and trying to, um, you know, maybe uh, I just want to change this just so it's part me. But yeah. at at the same time, you know, the song speaks right, and it and you know when it's right, and when those songs or those ideas or those those kernels of of uh of something come into the group the great thing about this band is when it leaves it's a brother bicker band song and it's and and we work it i mean one good example that i that i love is like breaking glass took us probably eight months to kind of figure out what it was going to sound like we knew it's one of my favorite songs we knew it was a great song but it, we didn't know what it was the end product or what it, what it was going to morph into. And it, would, it spent some time as a reggae song and it spent some time as a straight up rock song. And then, and then just kind of working through it and we, well, let's do a key change or, you know, our Carl, our last drummer, like, let's do this. Or Tom came in, let's do a shuffle beat. And Carl added, you know, there's three drum parts to it and into it. And it came out as completely different mm -hmm as what kind of we had it envisioned as but way better than i ever envisioned it as well so it's it really is i mean you do have to you put your ego aside but when you have a great song that also feeds your ego too as a band so yeah. Yeah. I, I can imagine um, the last 19 months since you released literally a uh, week after you released uh, a week before you released <laughs> the last album a global pandemic hit. So music kind of became a hard thing to do in person and practicing in person. How did the band overcome the last year and a half? And uh, it sounds like you have new music ready to go. It sounds like you are raring to get back out on the road and start touring again and start uh, playing for live audiences if you haven't already. But how has the last year and a half been? We'll start with Tom on this one. Yeah, I mean that that's the context for almost every question that that we think about now, isn't it? Like the what's what's going on, how has it affected us? I think we all we all realized, I, I think for me, I realized what a precious thing it was to be playing music with others and to be in person. So I think when we got back to that, it just felt like this amazing just coming together of something that I I, I didn't fully appreciate how much I missed and uh, I'm just really, really grateful for. So that's been a big piece of it. I think there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, we all had these incredible ambitions during COVID. Like I was going to be a, a Spanish speaking, you know, accordion player <laughs> by the end of COVID, right? Like I was going to had so many goals and I didn't get that done at all. So, but I got through and I think, uh, and, and we're getting through and, you know, the families are getting through and, and it feels like I'm continually learning about how to live in this kind of new world and kind of where music fits in that new world. You know, where, where does, where does a song, what is a songwriter to write about except what's around them? And how do you write about a global pandemic? 
Like I, I haven't found the way yet, but maybe that maybe they were working toward a global pandemic hit. Um, but but I think you know we're figuring out where music fits in, and for as a songwriter, where my experience of this past eighteen months fits in writing songs. And uh, so far, it seems to be fitting in this just sort of grateful place that you know I have this great group of guys that I can play music with, and and the sort of living and coming back together and and getting through has been really been really uh, really important. Journalism is in crisis, and our mission here at the Cross Border Interview Podcast is to tell the story that isn't being told. It is vital that independent journalism survives with the rise of fake news. Every penny that is contributed to the Cross Border Interview Podcast goes to help continue our work to tell people's stories. All of our content is produced and edited by our team. The Cross Border Interview Podcast provides entirely free content, and we will never hide stories behind paywalls. By supporting a new model of journalism, our listeners, like you, are supporting real, independent journalism. Consider making a monthly donation via our Patreon account, or make a one-time donation by Interact eTransfer. Now, let's get back to the show. Was there virtual uh, quote unquote jam sessions where you would get on Zoom and practice a song? And I hate to use jam session like I'm talking like the 1960s here, but I like that. That is my rock and roll knowledge in a heart in a beat there, right there. Um, then was it was it difficult to navigate the virtual world that we live in when trying to come up with music because doing it virtually compared to doing it live is two different things and being able to bounce ideas off each other like in person i I would love to have done this all in person but with the way the world works we can't so was it hard to do was it hard to be in a band during a virtual pandemic in some sense uh yeah it was it was definitely different i i know uh, early on, we had some pretty cool, uh, cool ambitions of getting together and jamming, and we, and truthfully, we tried. Uh, we got together just like this, and you know, turned on our microphones, and uh, you know, the guy, some of the guys have some nice, you know, studio connections to get their gear into the, you know, hooked into their laptops, and we realized really quickly that, you know, the stuff that you see on Facebook is really carefully planned and edited, and you know, recorded in bits and pieces, and it just it just does not work. <laughs> we, we like we it was a train wreck of a, of, but it was oh, fun to it's try. Painful, painful. <laughs> um, but we did do one. You know, we did do one thing where um, we put something together, where we each recorded a little bit over, you know, basically over a uh, click track, and I think we put it, you know, sort of put it together and, and put it out there. Uh, you know, but I'll, I'll be the first to profess that that uh, uh, I, I'm a pretty analog person. I like the the face to face experience, and and uh, I I haven't as much as I, I teach online on day to day basis. My my music hasn't made the transition to being online. So you know, we've talked about sharing files and you know building stuff in our you know music software online, and uh, it it hasn't happened to the level that we wanted it to, despite COVID's efforts to make it happen. And as a self-described person who just likes to play and uh, be the drums, Daryl, was it hard for you? Because it sounds like you are the sort of the new new guy to the group. But was it hard to sort of be in a pandemic and try to get a relationship that isn't virtual with the band? Definitely, man. Very hard. And uh, I'm grateful that we're coming through it and, you know, Hopefully, seeing the other end of it, and uh, you know, have people make the right choices to, you know, help stop this thing. Um, and yeah, that's uh, it was very difficult. No, no hiding away from it, you know. Uh, but you know, the positives were that getting back together and getting in a room together again was like Tom said earlier, just something we just had taken for granted before. And it's like, well, I'm going to do everything in my power not to even miss a rehearsal anymore, just because you know. Um, just because it's a precious thing that that you know we've taken for granted for many years. Yeah. 
So we, we are ending 2021 here. We have a few more weeks to go as this is airing. What does 2022 have in store for the band, Jeremy? What, what, what is the big plans for 2022? Is there a new album on the horizon? Is there uh, tour dates potentially being launched and announced here soon? What is the plan for the band? Well, I think, I mean, we'll continue to, to gig, but I think kind of the, this last few months and getting back together and the excitement around music and new music, we've, we're going to, we're going to hit the studio here sometime in the new year. And uh, which is actually why we're at our friend Christian Stonehouse's Broken Tap Records right now for a shout out. Um, but uh, there's definitely, we've got a, a backlog of songs that we need to get out. And the, the great thing about recording is it frees up when you it frees up space for new songs, and the the more you can get onto a, a onto recorded, the more room you have for other things to come in and and to be more creative. So I think we need to scratch that itch and and uh, hopefully um, within the next few months have some new music out is is the, definitely the plan for all of us. So we were talking last night about wanting to open. Uh, for the closing ceremonies of the Qatar uh, World Cup, too. <laughs> I thought it was 2026. I thought we were, we were doing the the North America World Cup. North America World Cup. Okay, so further down the road. Okay, I thought we were shooting for Qatar next year. Okay. okay. We needed a little more time to practice. <laughs> we, we, we will start the online campaign to, uh, as of this airing, and this will be my goal from now until the end of the Qatar World Cup, is to get you guys to play. Hey, you, said, you said your goal. Uh -huh. <laughs> goal! <laughs> oh, soccer fans. The one last question I have, and this is going to be for everyone here. You, you, I'm assuming you all live in the city of Calgary, as I do. Calgary is not known for a alternative. Okay, there's the big Lebowski. <laughs> That's the dude. <laughs> um, Calgary is not known for its quote unquote rock scene, its alternative scene. It's, uh, it's known as a country uh, town, uh, country music. You guys have a unique style, though. How have you guys broken out of the pack? Because I, I, I'm so happy that you guys reached out and were able to do this show with me because you've now gotten a new fan and I will be promoting you to my, my audience from here in Calgary, across the city and even around the world because for some strange reason, we have a massive following in Berlin and Australia. Hi, down yeah, there. Yeah, boy. <laughs> there you go. Hi. <laughs> so, how, what, you guys, being a different band than, uh, than country is unique in Calgary. Why, 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 why? I, I, got, I don't know how to ask the question properly here, but what makes you so unique that you want to go something different than country? Anyone for this one? I appreciate country music, but I don't to enjoy country music. <laughs> <laughs> Never playing at the Calgary Stampede ever. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, no, wait, so, wait, 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 Ben. Let's not, let's not I, don't make me so hasty. I, 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 I'm quite, you know, I, I love my Willie Nelson and, and, and I, I, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy country music, but I think we're not, we're not afraid to, like, I'm a classic rock guy. That's where I got, I love classic rock and I love funk and that's where you know, that's my happy place but you know it's uh classic rock was born out of country music mm -hmm. right and i think that that's where it's my the, the any country in my sound comes from is, is through that i know I, you know tom i can't speak for you and then the, the tasty licks you put on the guitar but um yeah that's where my spy perspective on it what about tom? Yourself? i think i think yeah i think i think calgary is a lot of things i think it has some roots and in country music, it's always had a really cool blues scene here. Um, and I think there's lots of really creative musicians here right now. And I think what you end up in, in places like Calgary where there's been a strong tradition in one way or another is you end up with this kind of fusion-y blend, this kind of soupy fusion-y cultural blend of music uh, that kind of brings a lot of elements together. And, you know, as much as I would say, you know, we're, we're not like huge country devotees, I think, you know, I think, 
half the guitar licks I play are inspired by sort of that sort of country steel sound. I mean, I grew up listening to classic rock and, and the Grateful Dead. And it's like, there's always going to be a country tinge to something in that. And, uh, and so I think it's finding that kind of fusion that works and kind of reflects all of us. And, and I think the long, the really the biggest musical sort of experience tradition is Daryl and what Daryl brings to the band with his musical experience kind of around playing around the world and, uh, and starting in South Africa and making his way into Europe and North America and spent a big stint in Nashville and just brings a kind of really cool musical history and sensibility to the sound and possibilities we could do. And, uh, and thinks about some of the some of the musical cliches that we probably fall back on and kind of challenges those a little bit to make our music just a, that much more interesting. What do yeah, you and, and I I, oh, I do ahead, think Jeremy. too that that um, sorry, Chris, I I do think that um, you know Calgary kind of gets pigeonholed as this uh, um, as a country town, but the the you know the rock scene here is and the other like blues scene like Jim. Our, our bassist who is also in the witness protection program couldn't be here yeah, today yeah. um jim duncan i mean he's played blues all his life and he came in with us and he adds that aspect to the to the music um you know there's some really great rock and uh and alternative music played here i mean daryl's in uh, another band and i'm going to give him a shout out because the rooks oh. um they're an amazing band check them out chris they're out of, awesome out of yeah. here and uh um uh, static shift they were they had some on the spot in the spotlight a couple of years ago on the the launch on ctv there from calgary and and uh we actually we met their drummer today yeah um so there there is that there there is a really vibrant rock scene in in the town in town and and there's a lot of venues that are that are um you know kind of working with that genre and we've been blessed and and uh fortunate enough to be able to kind of find our way in that and and we've met some great people and and some other worked with some other great bands and and there's a real sense of community and helping each other and and um wanting to you know to put calgary on the map for that so we're really grateful for that and and uh, there's just there is great music here yeah. i'll just piggyback on what tom's kind of said there for a second and this is pointed at daryl being someone who has played sort of internationally, starting in South Africa, moving to Nashville, you have seen the, uh, the I'm assuming, all different genres of music played in different locations, but you have settled and you made Calgary your home for now. Well, what is it about Calgary's music scene that gives you sort of sort of uh, a step up and say, you know what, we do have a great scene, a music scene here? Because I think like Jeremy and Tom and even Ben said, there is a uh, underlying theme of country music, but there is a vibrant uh, alternative scene as well from country. So what gives you the hope that the alternative scene is going to get its due? Daryl? I mean, I, I, uh, I think maybe the country music scene, which is great, and there's a lot of crossover with rock and country, with you know, sound text, and even musicians are like, a lot of country guys play rock, a lot of rock guys play country, but I think Calgary is just actually really diverse. Maybe just, it's just maybe some of the other genres are not publicized outside of the city as much. Um, but, and because we have Stampede, everyone thinks it's only a country town, but uh, it's a, there's a lot, there's a very diverse um, a music culture to me that I see here. And there's even a lot of crossover, you know, there's a lot of musicians playing multiple genres well but maybe the country one just happens to be the one that most people see or is the most popular, but, uh, but you know, it's a, it's a great scene here. Very diverse. That's awesome. Um, my last question, and this is, this is going to be similar to my very first question. This is going to be for everyone. What is one thing you would want my listeners to know about your band and who you are? that we have not talked about. And this is, you're gonna all have to say something different here. So we all can't be piggybacking on what we say, but I want, because we can cover a lot in a half hour, 40 minutes, but there's always something that I've left out as a journalist, as a reporter, as a host, there's always that one question I should have asked. And you're probably all thinking to yourself, why didn't you ask this question? So what is that question and how would you answer it? So we'll start with Ben. <laughs> Put, put them on the end, he's muted again. 
I mean, my mic. It's uh, I. What's one thing that both? I don't. I don't know. I, I truthfully, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to answer. I don't know how to answer that question. I feel like we've covered a lot, Ben. How about yourselves, uh, Daryl? We'll start. We'll go with Daryl, and then we'll end with Tom and Jeremy because they seem to, they seem to have the voice for Gab here. So, Daryl, what's one thing you'd want our listeners to know? And I was an Everton fan for two years in the eighties when Neville Southall was in goal, and I thought he looked like a drummer, so that's why I supported him for two years. But before and after that. I've been a Manchester United fan my whole life, so <laughs> an Everton fan, and I haven't ever told anybody that before. I will not yeah, hold never. The, I never, will not yeah. hold the fact that you are a Manchester United fan uh, to against you because I'm a uh, Newcastle fan, and Newcastle will always beat Manchester oh, left, yes. right. And say, oh yeah. Let's go. If you want to go, if that's what how you want to end the show, we will end the show. Interviews <laughs> over. <laughs> You just, you just have my sympathy right now. These are hard days to be a Newcastle fan, man. Wow. Don't, don't, yeah. we, we don't talk about what just happened. <laughs> we, we just move on. But what about yourself, Jeremy? What would you want my uh, my listeners to know? And, what, and I guess I should have asked this question too, and anyone can answer this. How can people listen to your music? How can people stream your music? How can people get in contact? I forgot to ask that question, but... What would you want? That's a great question, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. From Man, let, me, let, me, let me answer the second first. The second question first. You can listen to us on all major streaming services: Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon. Um, we and you can go to our uh, website, brotherbickerband.com, brother um, and uh, follow us on Instagram and Twitter um, under Brother Bicker Band. Um, as far as what um, I'd like people to know about the band, my personal, what m makes me excited about music is, is like for, for me, it's the live music and it's the performing. And I love when we have gigs and I love that connection with the audience and I love to be on stage and playing our music and I, I do think that we have a pretty fun live show. And uh, I, uh, um, you know, if you ever get a chance to, to come see us, um, when's our next gig? We have, we have a gig. Where are we playing, Daryl? The Broken? Um, Brickwell. Brickwell Tap House on January 7th and 8th is our next public live, uh, live gig. And um, for me, that's, that I love everything about it, but that's what gets me going. That's what, you know, it gets me through the day knowing that I have a gig in two weeks or, and that we're getting ready for it and being able to play live. And, and that's, uh, you know, at least for me personally, that's, that's where I really enjoy that feedback, uh, the personal feedback and playing in front of people. Yeah. Just I guess pick, I would say, yeah, just to pick up on that, group. but I'm going to, I'm going to ask you the, this question to follow up on what Jeremy just said, Tom, um, can people buy tickets for that January 7th and 8th uh, show beforehand, or is it tickets at the door? Do you know? That's a great it's question. Tickets at the door. Tickets at the door. Tickets yeah. at the door? Yeah. Okay. You, yeah. I, I will be there, so I'm looking forward to this. Because awesome. I, 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 like, I, like I told Ben during the, I've just moved to the city, so I'm relatively new to the city, and I have not met one bar that I have not gone into yet, so I'm looking forward to going somewhere and seeing some live <laughs> God dang music for once in this city <laughs> beforehand. But Tom, what what's one thing you'd want the people of my uh, my listeners to know? Oh, uh, I think because we're along the lines of what Jeremy said. I think you know we're a band that we really like what we do, and we practice hard, and we work hard, and we we bring it on stage, and that energy and that connection, and you know we take it we take it pretty seriously that we're playing for a live audience and take care to make sure the songs are right and they're ready to go and and uh, really take that process a combination of sort of seriously and fun yeah and uh love that love come see us live i mean you won't regret it so awesome and say uh, hi yes and say hi 
Um, I want to thank everyone for... A yeah. disclaimer, if you do regret it, uh, we it's no fault of ours. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> you I have to sign the waiver, Christian, when you arrive. Because <laughs> I, I, I would do regret not, it. Okay, I, I promise I'll give you a glowing review on all the streaming <laughs> services to make sure that you know. It's, it's probably not us. It's you. Yeah. You know, anyway. yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. Are you really throwing the Newcastle United fan under the bus here, aren't you? <laughs> okay. Um, I just want to say thank you to Ben, Tom, Jeremy, and Daryl for doing this. This has been an honor and a pleasure. Uh, the links to the, I'm going to say this right here correctly, just to make sure, the Brother Bicker Band will be in the show notes, the Instagram, social media feeds, the uh, website will all be there. Please check it out. Also, the links to their streaming sites for Spotify and Apple, uh, Apple uh, Music, all those fun things. Download their albums. I highly recommend it because they, are, they have a great album. And I just want to make sure I get the word name here. I was going to say it's uh, Northern Charm and Hospitality, but it's Hospitality and Northern Charm. I will get things right at least once, hopefully in the next few weeks. <laughs> um, but I want to thank everyone for watching this. Go check them out. Uh, if you are in the Calgary area on January 7th and 8th, please, please head on down to, I forget, uh, the Broken Glass? Brickwell, Brickwell Brick. Tap House. Brickwell Tap House. Please go check it out. The link to that or the location to that will be in the show notes as well. Um, for everyone here at the Cross Border Interview Podcast, have yourself an excellent rest of your Thursday. We will be back tomorrow morning, that's Friday, for another great episode, our, uh, our 100th episode. No, sorry, that's true. The 99th episode of the Cross Border Season 3 uh, will be airing tomorrow. And then we are shining a spotlight on one of our community organizations, the Alex, here in the great city of Calgary. So please tune in for that. So everyone here at the Cross Border Interview Podcast, have yourself an excellent rest of your day. And remember, keep talking.